Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into the hot topic that is core training. Developing a defined core, midsection, six pack, taking some inches off the waist, getting it nice and tight, getting that V taper going and all of that good stuff. So what I'm gonna be talking about in this video is the four main movements that you need to target in your core training and the most common mistakes that I see people make within their core training. And then I'm gonna give you four of my favorite core exercises. So definitely check that out coming up. So to start, we got four main movements, right, in your core training. First up is going to be spinal flexion. This is what's going to activate the abs on the front, that six pack that everybody's trying to get dialed in, right? And so spinal flexion basically is where you flex the spine in here, okay? Commonly you see that in exercises like crunches with people pulling up all up on the neck and whatnot. So we're going to replace those crunches because there's no real reason why you need to be spending all this time doing 500 and a thousand reps of crunches, all right? So that's pretty much the deal with that. Number two is going to be uh, spinal extension, right? Which is the opposite of that spinal flexion, okay? This is where you're gonna be working the spinal erectors on the back, right? That is super important because not only is that going to contribute to the definition of the musculature on your back, but it's also going to improve your posture. A lot of you got the shoulders rolled forward, kind of hunched up here, especially from doing all of those crunches. So when you start working on all of these muscles back here, that's gonna bring you up here, chest nice and high, shoulders roll back, chin back, great posture, right? And so you get a posture kind of looking straight up here, right? So that's the deal with that, okay? Now we have lateral flexion, which is this right here, this side to side movement, which I see people train in the gym. It looks kind of ridiculous. A lot of people do it with like a weight in both hands and they're doing this here going on, which is doing nothing because if you have 25 pounds in this hand, 25 pounds in this hand, and you're going back and forth, there is no real resistance on either side because you have the same amount of weight on both sides. So the most effective way to do that would actually be to have weight in just one hand, okay? But even that I wouldn't really suggest so much. Now this lateral flexion is going to be working a muscle that is on the posterior, right? It's on your lower back, um, which is called the quadratus lumborum or QL for short. Let's just call it QL, right? It's actually a muscle that's buried fairly deep under other muscles, but you can see it activating uh, when you're doing certain exercises, right? So that also contributes to the sturdiness and definition of your back, right? Moving on, we got number four, which is going to be spinal pivoting or twisting. This right here is where your obliques come into play. A lot of people target their obliques by actually doing this lateral flexion, which in fact target your QL. So rather than doing lateral flexion to target your, your obliques, do some pivoting at the torso to target your obliques, all right? And so a good way to tell the indication, to tell the indication, does that make a whole lot of sense? Not really, right? Okay. So the obliques, right? They actually, the direction of the muscle fibers run this way, okay? Your obliques go downward and across on its diagonal angle along the sides of the torso, okay? So when you're training any given muscle in the body, you actually want to produce a movement that runs within the same direction of those muscle fibers. So if the muscle fibers of the obliques run this way, then you should really work on moving and following that direction of those muscle fibers. Now, when you train your obliques, you wanna train them in conjunction with your rectus abdominis, which is that muscle on the front, right? Because the obliques actually do work to assist your abs, right? And vice versa. So that downward movement, you need to flex the spine and pivot. And that's really how you get maximum development in your abs as well as your obliques. So if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to target your obliques, 
let's cut this out and start putting in more rotation going on. That's how you really effectively target your obliques. Last but not least about the obliques is you have external obliques and internal obliques. Now your external obliques, like I said, run this way, but your internal obliques are underneath your external obliques and run in the opposite direction. Now the beauty about the obliques is when you train them as they become stronger and they contract, they create a corset effect on the torso that actually pull in this way, right? So your obliques actually run like shoelaces, right? Creating that corset effect. So as your, uh, as your abs strengthen, as your obliques strengthen and they actually contract, that will help towards you losing inches off your waist by having that corset effect. It's like it's actually like tightening shoelaces. All right, so that's pretty much the deal with that. Plain and simple. Number one, uh, spinal flexion, which is the contraction of the abs. Number two, spinal extension, which is the contraction of the spinal erectors. Number three, lateral flexion, which works your QL. And number four, which is the twisting or pivoting at the torso, which targets the obliques. All right, so diving into four of my favorite core exercises, I'm gonna start with an exercise that teaches you how to effectively contract and flex your spine. And that is going to be the open to close hollow. Now the reason why this exercise or an exercise like this is so important is because traditionally what people do is sit-ups and leg raises and exercises like that. Now here's the problem. If you really don't know how to engage your abdomen, if you really don't know how to properly isolate and flex your spine, with an exercise like leg raises or sit-ups, these exercises primarily focus on flexing the hip, right? So leg raises, raising your legs, flexing your hips, sitting up, flexing the hip. Now, if you don't know how to actively flex your spine, hold that position, and then flex the hip, then you're mainly just gonna feel it in your thighs, quadriceps, hip flexor muscles, and things like that, rather than your actual abs. So what I get from people typically with a weak core is, I feel it a lot in my lower back, right? If you're feeling ab exercises a lot in your lower back, chances are your abdomen is not really too well trained because you haven't really properly learned how to flex the spine and hold that position, which is super important. So rather than doing the sit-ups and the crunches and the leg raises and stuff, let's get to the open to close hollow. So in the open to close hollow position, this is going to start belly up, flat on your back, and you are going to bring your knees into your chest as much as possible and reach your arms forward until you get your fingertips uh, to your heels, right? Or to the soles of your feet, okay? And so here you really round out your back. You wanna get your back flush to the ground. So that, that lower back arch that's normally there, you wanna flex that out. So in this position, in this closed hollow position, you, you should be able to rock back and forth on your back, kind of like a, how a turtle, how an upside down turtle would be, where you could just rock back and forth, right? With your back rounded out, making like, like almost like, like hunching your back. Well, not almost, you're really just hunching your back. So once you get into that position and you really perfect that closed position, you can then open up where you reach your arms out behind you and you reach your feet out and you extend your legs out in front of you. Do both simultaneously and take your time with this movement, right? Because you wanna fully extend the arms and the legs while keeping that flexed core, while keeping that flexed abdomen. Once you fully extend, then you can slowly bring back the knees, tucking them to the chest and reaching forward to your fingertips, reach the soles of your feet. Each position you can hold for about one second, two at the most, and repeat. I promise you, with an exercise like this, you're not going to be doing, you know, 20, 30, and 50, and 100 reps and all of that. You will feel this exercise work your core within those first three to five reps, right? And some of you may not be able to fully extend your arms and your legs fully out, and that's fine. Go as far as you can before you, like, let's say, feel back discomfort, back pain, or whatever the case is, right? We don't need to be feeling pain and killing ourselves during these exercises. 
So moving on, the next exercise is going to be the prone back extension. Now, a lot of people try to work their lower back by getting on some type of back hyperextension machine where they bend over this thing and they're doing this right here. And so rather than leg raises or sit-ups, which focus on hip uh, flexion, they get on a machine that works on hip extension. Now the thing is hip extension mainly targets the glutes, okay? It mainly targets your butt muscles, okay? So here we want to isolate and target the posterior core, not really your glutes. So the most effective way to do this without any equipment in a much more efficient way would be the prone back extension. So this is pronated, so it's going to be belly down, right? And so you would start in a position where your palms are going to be down on the ground with your elbows tucked to your side and your palms of your hands to the sides of your shoulders right almost like if a police officer pointed their gun at you and told you to freeze right you put your hands up right to your sides here hey right and then what you do is you then arch your back pick your chest up off the floor pick your palms up off the floor retract your scapula squeeze your glutes and your hamstrings and boom arch as much as you can and hold for about a second or two and then come back down and repeat right so really instead of really actively trying to flex the spine you're doing the opposite here now the beauty of an exercise like this is the fact that it works on improving your posture and your shoulder health right because now you're retracting the scapula and all that type of stuff which scapular function is extremely important to shoulder function right so if you're really kyphotic this is an important exercise for you to get those shoulders back shoulders down and the chest up right and so an exercise like this is really going to benefit you if you have lower back pain a weak lower back things like that you struggle with getting into a good starting position in a deadlift and so on right so definitely the prone back extension there you will definitely be feeling this also within the first three to five reps, definitely 10 reps in, you will really be feeling this, okay? And don't neglect training uh, your core on the backside because that is just as important to train as the front. So now whenever you throw twisting into the mix, this is where things get really interesting. We start adding the obliques in and we start creating some flexion and twisting at the same time. So this brings me to the supine leg raise arch, right? Or the supine arching leg raise, where, however you want to call it, right? So this is like a leg raise, but instead of raising your legs straight up and down, you're actually creating uh, an arching pattern with your legs side to side, right? In that arcing fashion. So it would be like if you were to trying to, if you were trying to trace half a McDonald's arch with your feet, right? That's what this is. So you start lying flat on your back. Your feet are gonna be out 45 degrees to either the left or the right, wherever you choose to start. And your arms are gonna be out 45 degrees with your palms down to the floor. So you start over one side, arching over, and you should land 45 degrees on the other side. Now you can use your palms to press down on the ground to give you some leverage to stabilize your torso, right? Rather so that you're not, you don't just tip over and roll off the mat or wherever you are when you're actually making that arching pattern, okay? So here, when you actually bring your legs to that 90 degree angle straight out in front of you, your, your hips should be bent 90 degrees in a full leg raise with your heels pointed straight up to the sky or the ceiling, wherever you are, right? And then just repeat back and forth from left to right and from right to left, etc. You can do that for as many reps as, as you're capable of doing, sets of 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, however strong your core is. And you can just keep tacking on reps in this exercise as your core gets stronger. Now you remember uh, earlier I said, I don't know if I actually mentioned this, but when you target your obliques, you also want to target your abs. So you want to flex the spine as well as pivot simultaneously because the muscle fibers of the abs run vertically and the muscle fibers of the obliques also run vertically as well as horizontally. So they actually tie into the abs, right? So the, all of those muscles kind of go in the same direction or at least converge to the same direction 
And that's why you want to train them together. So last but not least, we have the prone alternating external knee tuck. <laughs> that is a mouthful. So basically in this exercise, you start in a push-up position and rather than bringing one knee, tucking it into the chest, you actually bring that knee to the point where your thigh makes contact with the outside of your upper arm. So you're just bringing that knee around to the side. So in this exercise, we're working the abs, we're working, we're working the obliques, and we're working the QL because we actually have to laterally flex in order to get the thigh to connect, actually make physical contact with the upper arm. Right, so you do the left, connect, you do the right, connect. So you're actually slightly rotating at the torso flexing the spine and laterally flexing. So we're hitting a lot of core muscles together in this exercise. This is probably, well actually, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is the most complex exercise out of these four because it will really wear on your triceps and your shoulders as well as your core right here. And so definitely do the other three first and nail those and then move on to an exercise like this but still nonetheless it's a tremendous exercise definitely very beneficial and this way you don't have to just stand up in front of the mirror with a weight in your hand and repeatedly flex laterally in order to hit your ql all right this is a much more effective way to do it one last note when you are doing any of these core exercises take your time I see people rushing and jerking around and yanking because they just want to complete the reps. This is all about effort. You are actively trying to put effort into contracting these muscles in the core. So I know it's going to burn like hell, but trust me, don't be lazy. Don't cut corners. Take your time with each rep. Really feel that muscle contracting on each rep and I guarantee you, you will see some amazing benefits from doing exercises like these.